let's say I get to here fairly well, what do I do from here? Now the feeling from here would be trying to get your uh, trail thumb to your trail shoulder in terms of curling it. Yes, More that, that direction, yes. Got it. And the goal will, will be as you do that to finish turning at the same time. Okay, so it's really from here, I go wide with the elbow in front. My trail arm from there, if we just isolate that, is doing that curl position, Yes. right? So I'm doing the curl, but as I'm doing the curl, I'm turning. Yes, I'm doing that turn. late part of the turn like we talked about. Yes. I see how this is all coming together here. <laughs> Hey guys, Eric here outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to load your right arm for more power. Obviously, you guys can see Mr. JT Thomas to my left here. Uh, you've seen JT in some of our other videos. Awesome coach, we coach together, uh, do some in-person golf schools. We coach together at kagornogolf.com. If you guys are looking for us to analyze your swing, wanna send your swing in and work with us, you can check out kagornogolf.com. We'll put a link down in the description down below. JT's also in Staten Island, has a new indoor facility. If you guys are interested up in the Northeast, go check that out. We will put a link down below for that as well. So JT, how to load the right arm. Now this is something that I see, uh, I've seen you talk about a couple times, and I've seen you give feedback to a lot of the members on how the trail arm works. And I think we can talk about how someone can load their right arm and give them good feels and general concepts uh, to be able to create more power, hit the ball more solid, right? Yes. And so let's say we start from the basics, right? I come in for a lesson, we're hitting balls, and I'm like, JT, I'm not sure you know, what my right arm is supposed to do during the backswing. Can you help guide me, help, help get me started? What are some key points for me? So I think, I think some key points uh, to understand is most people fold their right arm way too soon. Mm. So folding the right arm a lot later is very important. I think how we use our wrist and our hand versus pronation and supination in terms of like, um, you know, how we uh, twist the club in the backswing. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing is how we actually fold it. So more like a lawnmower versus a bicep curl. So okay, bicep curl is how we get the power. Bicep curl is how we get the power. <laughs> so let's talk about the how much we fold when part first. So if I take my normal setup, right, and I'm here like this, we said, generally speaking, the error would be folding the right arm too much too quick. Yes. Right? We want to have it fold later. Much later. And so let's talk through how to do that in some checkpoints. So if I were to, let's say I start here normal, you know, I've got a slight amount of bend in my trail arm to set up. How am I starting this, JT? You're, you're going to feel like your trail arm stays straight. It doesn't really add any bend until your lead arm is parallel to the ground. So you're pushing your right arm as far away from you as you can. Okay. And then also from this perspective, we're not letting it get too far behind us. So if you start over here kind of at the ball, another folding issue would be one where it pulls like this, almost like a lawnmower, where it pulls behind you too quickly. Okay. So that would cause some other issues really on the downswing. But yeah, pushing it out, keeping it in front of your shirt seam and pushed out really as far as you can away. So I'm keeping my right arm uh, this is the part where I repeat everything you said. Yeah. I'm keeping my right arm, as I'm feeling this, much wider, what it feels like to me, longer. Yes, longer. about left arm parallel. So it's wider, longer, and it's more in front, not behind me. Yes. Right, so elbow in front of this kind of seam line for my shirt would be my checkpoint. So I'm wider with the trail arm, and it's more in front of me is what it feels like compared to normal. Yes. I'm just going to do a little hit with that, JT. Wider and more in front. And that's about to the point where I get to, I felt good. That was really nice. Until I get to left arm parallel. Now, as I go from there, obviously it doesn't stay straight the whole time. No. Right, there's a folding component to it. Yes. So let's say we get this part pretty good. I'm wider, I'm in front of me. Again, the air being like too bent, too far behind me, too quick. Correct. Elbows too far apart. Let's say I get to here fairly well, what do I do from here? Now the feeling from here would be trying to get your uh, trail thumb to your trail shoulder in terms of curling it. Yes, More that, that direction. Yes. Got it. And the goal will, will be as you do that to finish turning at the same time. Okay. So it's really from here, I go wide with the elbow in front. My trail arm from there, if we just isolate that, is doing that curl position. Yes. Right? So I'm doing the curl, but as I'm doing the curl, I'm turning. Yes, I'm doing that turn. late part of the turn like we talked about. Yes. I see how this is all coming together here. <laughs> now when I get to the top, even though the tops, we like to do it like it's static, but it's really dynamic. 
am I, you know, like 90 degrees is a rough? 90 degrees is a perfect rough estimate. Rough yeah, estimate just yeah. to get to something like this. I'm looking, if I'm like here at 45, maybe I folded too much. If I'm past that, potentially too wide, something to 90 degrees. Yes. Okay. So wider with the trail arm early. So many times I can repeat this. Elbow in front, feeling this but I'm not really doing that as much because I'm doing the turner. Yes. Which is to about right there. Does that look pretty good? That looks really good. So I'm gonna try and put that together just here for a second. So I'm wider early, bending it. Wider early, bending it. And for someone who doesn't bend it enough, it will definitely feel more narrow. So okay. uh, for you, you, you have a tendency to keep it too wide. It's gonna feel a lot more narrow for you in this. Calm out right <laughs> So for me, because I'm wide, it'll feel narrow. Yes. And so if I'm if I'm too wide, or yeah, okay. So let's say I'm too wide. I'm gonna okay. And you're gonna start to actually see. So notice you just did it. You're gonna pull your right elbow more behind you rather yeah. than keep it higher and fold it more like the curl. During the late part of my back. During swing. the late part of your okay. back. Swing. So I'm going here. I'm going wide in front. There you go. Much better. Okay. And that and like you said, that's a little bit particular to me. Yes. Okay. So widen in front and then bending. So I'm gonna hit a little bit thin. Mm -hmm. So that bending part, so definitely, okay. So now let's say I'm the opposite though. Let's say I come in and I, you know, I guess most people who are too bent at the top though, are probably too bent too early. Yes, huh? too bent too early and they're, they're bent the wrong way. So their arm really folds uh, behind them more the lawnmower action versus the, yes, exactly. Now what about JT? Let's say I came up and I get this part, I'm wide, elbows in front, and then I do overbend it. I would just simply feel like it stays wider longer. It stays wider longer. You can yeah. feel, you can push basically your right palm towards the sky and push it away from you. Yep. You can still have some push away as you fold your arm. Okay. So exactly. Okay. Gotcha. So that's the, that's the feeling that you would want to have. You don't want to feel too much collapsing. You can keep the arm folding. That's very good. Definitely awesome. more bend than I normally would do. Yes, much yeah. more bend. Okay. Yeah, that's really about as nice. good as I can do right there. So, all right, Dr. Thomas in the building again. Um, I always hit it a lot better when you when we're done with these. So, I'm doing. So I'm checking versus 90, seeing where I'm at. I'm, I'm feeling. I'm feeling that from there. So that's the bending part, right? Let's talk now about the second piece, we, right? Yeah, the orientation part, which it actually goes directly with the bending and how it would bend. Okay. So you can just take this, uh, almost just hold the club with your left hand, hold yep. your right hand out there. Yep. Great. If you take your right hand and you pronate it, which means you would turn your hand towards the ground, you notice your elbow is going to come more out, right? Yep. It's going to start to away from me. yeah. It's going to okay. start to bend a whole lot immediately. It's going to get behind your shirt seam if you were to add any turn. Yep. And that's going to make it in, internally rotated to where you have to really go from internal to external pretty quickly in the backswing to be able to get the club to shallow. Yeah, right. so it's yeah. pretty hard to do. Yeah, okay. a lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. So to make it a little bit easier would be to add some supination or your thumb rotating more and your hand rotating more open. Exactly. And that's going to make it easier for you to do a bicep curl and fold it. Yes, okay. that way. So when I do this early part and I'm wide and in front, when I do the little bit more of the palm up, not really palm up, but that's what's it's going towards that. Yes, going towards that. That keeps my elbow a lot closer. Yeah, and in front. In front, yes. in terms of the seam line part. Got mm -hmm. it. So if I'm someone who's too far behind, here, I got too much internal right palm two down in pronation, I would feel more of the palm up, elbow in front, little external rotation. Yes. And that's you guys got all that in yeah. technical terms? <laughs> but I think that's a simple thing to be able to understand. Yeah, just think of how your palm is uh, moving, makes it really easy for you to fold it a certain way. Then palm up, elbow in front, palm down, elbow, elbow behind. behind. Exactly. Okay. So as I'm going here, elbow in front, wider, folded. Elbow wider, folded. Yeah, that and feels to, good for me. To make the, to really unlock the power for this would be learning to finish that folding, finish the bicep curling as you're starting the downswing. So as the pelvis is opening to make it really dynamic, really athletic, is now learning to add that folding yeah. as your body's starting to really hit the ball. So that like, it, it's not as though we make it where it's like, all right, wide, Fold. 90, yeah. here, 120. That thing's really going this way. Yes. Right, that thing's really folding as I'm yes. moving. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the power comes from. Absolutely. It's like you're saying, if I took the club and was just doing that more, that sort of whip 
the whip feel. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the later, the later you can feel that folding, the more it folds as the transition happens, the more whip we're gonna get. Really I mean, nice that's on that. Hammered one. for me. That one was hammered. Yeah. So, so I think for I think it's really important. Um, obviously, there are golfers good. who overfold their right arm. Most of the time, when they do overfold it, though, they do it the wrong way. It's yeah. rare that I've seen someone fold it nicely and overfold it the, the right way. So for most golfers and to get more power, I think we can kind of overload that lever okay. to get us some more power and get us some more leverage down into the ball. Especially like with the key point that it gets wide enough early enough. Yes, because then you have all that, you have all it left to fold. If you use it all early, you have nothing left and then you end up giving it out. Got it. Yeah, it's a key point for a lot of things we always talk about that you make good points on that I think we, we overlook a lot is if you do something too much too early, you have nothing left to do later. Exactly, you run out of range fold. of motion. So, okay, we have the width piece early. Mm -hmm. That's the key. We have how the arm rotates. It's gonna affect where my elbow and where I pull it. I want wide and in front, bicep curl. Wide and in front, bicep curl as I turn. Yes. That's kind of the, like, if you could write up a stock movement pattern, right? That, that's are, what we would want. Are there any other pieces to this JT that are relevant? Or are those kind of the main? Those are the main ones. Adding the dynamics to the folding is what really gives us the power. But we have to set it up really nice. Dude, that's as good as I can hit it. Really good. We have to set it up in a way that allows us to do that. Getting that right arm to fold, getting it to, to uh, supinate a little bit, allows yeah. it to have that external, the right arm more in front, holding that lag, hitting the ball far. And especially, last little, so okay, so especially as I'm coming down during my downswing, right? Yes. If I'm setting it up to your point here, and I'm here, and then I can continue that in transition, my elbow location compared to if I'm here, here, here the whole time. Yes. Yeah. That's what we would see with someone who folds it behind them too much. Got it. Is that downswing position. I love that, dude. I think my, my take home, if I was getting a lesson here, to again, is like, if I'm practicing this, I'm wide and in front, and then I'm bicep curl as I turn. Yes. I'm wide and in front, I'm bicep curl. And as I'm doing bicep, I'm looking at where am I relative to 90 degrees, and I'm trying to make it dynamic in transition. Perfect. Cool? All yeah. right, dude. Good stuff. So, guys, that's um, how you use your right arm and load and fold your right arm. I think that's beautiful. I always just, I think I'm going to not have JT come in videos anymore and he's just going to be my personal golf coach because I always hit the ball so good. Hopefully you guys too, after this, you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click that like button down below, click the subscribe button, also leave a comment down below. It really helps us out. The more interaction there is between us, YouTube likes that, sends our videos out to more people, it really helps us. If you want to support the channel, you can do, uh, click that little like button down there. Uh, appreciate that. If you do like these YouTube style videos, we're gonna put a card on the screen for a very similar video like this. If you wanna hop over to Cogorno Golf, check that out, see what it's all about. Work with me so I can help improve your golf game. We'll also put that on the screen. Thank you guys for watching.